like rare earth magnets, so it'd be super heavy. Yeah, and then it'll erase your fall. <laughs> oh shoot, this shouldn't be in that drawer. Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trish, if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back. Here we are in my studio on the channel where I document my fiber journey. So that means sometimes knitting, spinning, weaving, dyeing, quite a bit of dyeing, um, crocheting a little bit. I have projects that I haven't talked about. There's going to be felting eventually, I hope. So that's what we're doing here. And we've built an amazing community around it. Kind of happened naturally. Uh, so if you're interested in being part of the community, we are live on Sundays where we craft together. And then also um, there's a Facebook group. That link is in the description box. If you're interested, come and see us and hang out. But what we're here for today is uh, mostly something that I'm gonna have to explain for people who don't come to the live videos. So, because it's mostly only been talked about in live videos. I have a Hanson electric spinning wheel. It has been stopping after shorter and shorter periods of spinning. And I've been um, communicating with them, trying to get them to fix it for me. And they've been, they send me the FAQs over and over again. <laughs> Basically kind of, I don't know if I wanna say blaming me, but just saying like that I'm doing something wrong. But I don't think I am, because I spun on it for at least five years with no problems. It is 12 years old, I should have said that. I bought it used. And then suddenly after, it started to be like after about an hour it would stop, and then the time period got shorter and shorter. I didn't even make it 10 minutes last time. I was struggling and I was feeling so upset about how the customer service situation was going. It's not under warranty, so I knew I was going to have to pay for repairs. I was 100% fine with that because I absolutely love that wheel. If you've been here for a while, you already know that. And I would have said, I am a Hanson groupie for life before the customer service situation happened where this wheel was not working. And it's been so, it sounds stupid to say, but it's been so challenging and it has been so like actually upsetting to me because I feel like I keep getting blamed and um, I'm willing to pay to fix it. So it's weird to me how it's been handled, but maybe it's my tone and emails or maybe I'm not good at writing. I don't know. I've never felt this way before, so I'm not sure. But the point is I have packed it up to send it to them and then changed my mind. That's gonna be a separate video what happened with it i mean is going to be a separate video we were all talking about it on the live last week because it stopped after like eight minutes of spinning <laughs> and i was kind of stressed out and i had mentioned that i was on the daedalus website looking at i think it's the magpie the really big one is the one that if i was going to get one that's what i would get they have a waiting list and i don't know how long out the waiting list goes but i don't there's something about that that makes me feel stressed. I think it's the not knowing when it could be. Like it could be two months from now I have to come up with a crazy, crazy a big amount of money. It could be six months, a year. Um, for whatever reason, my brain doesn't like not knowing when. I don't know, that doesn't make sense, right? But it's true. Well, a bunch of you recommended a wheel that is way more affordable and that I've never really considered getting because I had experience with a much, much, much earlier version and it was like just okay. It wasn't bad, but it was just like okay. So anyway, it's much more affordable and I just bought one. I pulled the trigger, I bought a new one and it is, I got one, it's happening. I helped someone at my local yarn store put together a much earlier version and it was a Nano and it was the kind that was like cut out with a Glowforge out of I don't know if it's balsa wood or basswood. I don't know the words for those things, but it was, you put it together and it worked right away, but it was so small and so light, which is a plus for certain types of portable spinning. But I thought I was used to my Hanson and I think that I thought this is too small and too light. And then I 
I don't know, I just kind of didn't really consider the brand again, I guess. But they've come a hugely long way. A lot of you guys already know this. Um, and that version, that, that all happened probably like two or three years ago. And so in the last two or three years, they have done a lot. I started to look at their website and I was like, I'm just doing it. How the heck do I get in this box? Okay, so we're gonna open it and we're gonna see how long <laughs> it takes me to get to spinning with this new wheel. Okay, I figured because they're so affordable, um, but they're not so inexpensive that a lot of us are just like, oh, I'm just going to get one. It's still at a price point where a lot of us are like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. So I thought it would be cool to do it here together. So, okay. I'm going to point you down. I still don't know how to open this box. P.S. <laughs> how do you do this? Do I have to open this too? I think I do. I'm doing it. I really should go get my pink knife. If you've been around for a while, you know the knife. Okay. You ready? All right. I'm going to show you exactly. This is how it looks. Um, there are instructions and some um, like accessory type things. We'll go through this. Oh, there's even a control card here. You see that? How handy is that? I love that. Did they send an orifice hook? I don't, um, yeah, that's what this is. So there's an orifice hook in here. Looks like a drive band. I guess I'll know soon. Um, and also there's a VR code if you want to, I'm guessing download the manual. I cannot read because I don't have my, oh yeah, I do. <laughs> So, and if you don't know, Dreaming Robots is who makes these. So, um, yeah, let's take the stuff out. So here is parts of the bobbins in these two bags. I think I get three, gosh, I don't know how many bobbins come with this. We'll, we'll get to that. And then here is the flyer. So I will tell you guys, and a lot of you already know this, that I am not a slidey hook fan. So that is one thing that kept me from um, this and the Daedalus in the past is that I don't really like the slidey hooks, but at this point, since my Hanson is working so poorly, um, I just kind of felt like I got to do something. You know what I mean? I believe these are 3D printed, although I honestly don't know. Uh, this orifice is nice and substantial. It looks nice and it spins very smoothly. Uh, I, I mean, it looks pretty nice. This actually looks really quite good. Okay. <laughs> um, here is my power cord. It might just be part of it. I don't know if it has like a, you know, the kind of power supply that you put the two pieces together. This is like the Maiden's basically the rest of the machine. Looks like this is the bottom, a base. So we had, John and I had talked about this, like can we screw it to something heavier if it's too light? We'll see what happens. I don't, I mean, it looks like you just connect this. We'll get to it. We take everything out of the box. Okay, there is a more of a power supply. So it's a two piece power supply. I kind of expected that, so that's cool. And then this is the controller. So that's everything in the box. I'm gonna move the box so we can mess around with this thing. I'm gonna move the pieces. Bubble wrap, okay. Where did I put that here? It's on the bottom. So it looks like you do get a manual. Okay. It is nice if you do that and download it and like save it somewhere, then you have it wherever you need it. It's always on your phone or whatever. All right, so here's the manual. I'm gonna go through what's in here again. Okay, there's a safety notification. There's a parts list so you know what everything is that comes and also 
the little thing that shows you points out what each piece is. All right, initial setup. Okay, so the next page is initial setup. We're gonna go through the setup and I'm gonna do this pretty real time. I'm not gonna cut anything out unless like John comes home from his walk with the dogs cause that might be kind of noisy, but I'll stop. Let's see, no tools are required. Uh, first assemble the bobbins. There are two types of bobbin discs. One has a pulley and the other is flat. Put a metal bearing into the end of each type of bobbin disc. As I said, the bobbin pieces are in here. Um, I'm gonna put together an aqua one first. How many of these did I get? It says one has a pulley, the other is flat. Put a metal bearing into the end of each. Isn't that what this is? <laughs> oh good, John's home. I'm gonna ask him. Hang on, as soon as he gets in. Okay, here's the instructions to put the bobbins together. It says put a metal bearing into the end of each type of bobbin disc. Is this? It's in there, yeah. This is, so it's already in here? Yes, that's the bearing. Okay. So just to got, tell you guys, if you get this, John's helping me. <laughs> I thought this might be, but the, it comes already with the bearing in it. So if it if you read it and it says to put the bearing in, this is what it looks like. And it mine came in there already, okay? Um, take each of those discs, screw them onto a bobbin tube. I can do that. Okay, so what they're saying too, is that one of them should have this groove for the drive band and one should not. So see how you get the groove on one. Oh, hey. This is why I need my husband. <laughs> He's like, seriously? Okay. Let me just make sure because it's not threaded all the way on. Okay, we got one together. Easy. Next slide a bobbin onto the flyer with the flat end at the orifice and the pulley end at the back. All right, if you're new to this, I'm gonna help you out. This is the pulley end. This goes at the back. This flat end goes at the orifice. So just like this, that easy. Finally, put the black, wait a minute, put a metal bearing onto the back of the flyer and slot the whole flyer assembly into the base. I need directions. Another bearing? I'm confused. All right, I do see what you're saying. Okay, comes with another bearing comes with three more bearings in this bag full of like little extra parts and pieces. So you take one, put it on the back, okay? And then you're supposed to put this whole thing, how, wait a minute, I've gotta loosen this up. I'm, gonna, I'm loosening up the brake. The brake band is right here. I am loosening it up so I can just take it off for now and then I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the base. You can tell which end goes where. I'll show you, hang on. So if you're looking at the base, this end is quite a bit bigger. This is the front and you're gonna drop the front orifice into that piece. Okay. <laughs> and now the brake band, there we go. Oh, I see. All right, cool. 
the pulley um, for the motor is on the flyer right here. I did have that wrong, but I put it together right because I followed the directions because I can follow directions. Finally put the black drive band on the motor pulley, then wrap it around the flyer in the drive belt groove. Where's that? Right here. Thanks. John just brought me something to plug it into, guys. Okay, it comes with two, two drive bands, black, I don't know, nylon, what are these? Who knows? Rubber, rubber we don't know exactly. Rubber-ish, rubber John said. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna make sure, I'm trying to make sure you can see. The, right here, the pulley goes on the motor down here. This might be the only part that's like a little harder to. Okay, that didn't work. How am I gonna do this? How do you do this? I couldn't get it on. This can't go past that, so this has to lift up. Slip that on there. But it's supposed to go on the pulley first. I know you can't see. That's why I'm helping. Okay. You just have to like pull it like crazy. Oh. Okay, this is speed control. I think I want. Oh. Doesn't it seem tight? Stop. This is my two notes on. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, nobody's going to know that but us, what that is. Okay, John helps me. Wrap it around the flyer in the drive belt groove. Slide the tension string into the bobbin pulley. So that's back here, right? Mm -hmm. I need more play. Okay. Got it. When you start spinning, you can adjust the tension dial. If you want to attach the bottom cover, optional. Okay, so I'm thinking you can screw this to a base. I'm thinking you can fill that thing full of sand. I, Something heavy. And then just drop it down right on. We need to put a, a leader on this bobbin really quickly. I should have actually done it before, but, but this is a good tip. So if you're a new spinner, a lot of people just wrap this around or they'll tape it so it doesn't spin, but you don't have to. If you just wrap wrap your leader around three times, the extra, you'll get the same amount of, um, I call it play after you knot it. So, because the loop always has a little bit of play and sometimes it'll spin. If you just have one loop, that play doesn't spread out. But if you have three loops, you literally, it won't slip. You can see, look, see? So you don't need tape. I don't like tape on my bobbins, so I don't do that. And then I like a loop at the end. Not necessary, but that's what I like. Okay, easy. If you want to use a foot switch, uh, we do. Marked switch. All right, then you just connect. It says into the port marked switch. Uh, looks like that's in the back. Yep. Okay, and then your power supply, John already brought me, actually let's just do this, put this in here. John brought me a plug, or a cord, and then a 
what I have? Can you help? Do you, I don't think I still have that stupid <clears throat> band on because I didn't dare stretch it that much. I, mean, I figured you had two if I broke it. <laughs> I wonder if people are going to be able to hear that. So did you really feel that way? Like you were stretching it so much? Like what are you? What am I doing? No, I figured it would hold. Okay, all right. But I'm guessing that's why they give you two because that amount of tension on it probably eventually yields it, or yields it, or stretches it. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we're plugged in. I think is this plugged in all the way. Yes. Okay. It says you will see. There's a light on the power. Yep. Okay. So that's on. Plug the power. Blah, 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 blah. Did that. Okay. Don't know what I'm doing. Now it says just turn this. Oh. Hello. It looks like it's going to actually spin. So there's also a little switch, which I did not show before, right here, and it says on the front, S and Z, so you know which way the wheel's going to go based on which way this little switch is. So for a lot of us, but not everybody, we spin a single with an S twist, and we ply with a Z twist, but it's not, you know... That is not the only way to do things. Okay, so I have my leader run through the two little hooks. I'm gonna run it out the orifice. For if you want one, I'll order one. You can just order them? Probably. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we're gonna try mm. to spin. Um, I'm gonna use my leader to see if I've got enough uptake because I actually don't know. Nope, I gotta tighten up the brake. Okay. All right, so that was a, added a lot of twist to my leader, which is fine. We're gonna try it. Let's see who's ready. Oh, this is the Toil and Trouble that I carded in a video just to see if it would disperse the sari silk more. So I just grabbed it. I just literally grabbed like the closest thing I could find, honestly. It's so hard to find wool in my house <laughs> to spin. <laughs> okay. Ready? Here we go. All right, so you can get it spinning in like 10 minutes, especially if you watch this and you see where I kinda, I don't know went wrong or where I, you'll learn. Yeah, where John had to help me. <laughs> Are you kidding? It's fairly quiet. Would you say it's as quiet as the Hanson? Not quite. Uh, there's some echo from the plastic, but we could probably fix that by adding some weight to it. Well, and I'm yeah. hearing like rubbing from the brake band, which is fine. It's not hurting, that but will, I can hear that it. That will probably wear down. Will it? Okay. Because there's texture on the bobbin? Okay. So that's it. And this is how pretty that looks. You know what? I think I like this better than I do when I spin it straight off the bump. I have to say, I mean, I'll have to spin more on this to give it a real review, but it's really easy to put together, super affordable, and, uh, boy, it isn't so light that you feel like you know, that you, it isn't so light that you feel like it's gonna move or walk around, and this is a very smooth desk, so if it was gonna walk or if the tension from me spinning was gonna pull it towards me, you would see it. This wheel's pretty nice, especially for the money. 
if it is moving and you're having trouble with it you can put it on a piece of that um carpet anti-slip stuff that you can buy at like dollar stores that's where i bought ours so and i use that in drawers like to keep the the organizers from moving around i use it all over the place to keep things from slipping so also you could set it on a piece of yoga mat we're cracking ourselves up over here anyway i have to say we're not even drinking no we're not drinking maybe we should have definitely be on the second band if that were the case. Now it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> anyway, so far, I really think it's great. And I bought, I think everything here, I will look at my number and I will put it on the screen. Um, I bought this wheel new. So I will tell you the total, but these things are quite affordable. And it actually seems to be much better constructed and thought out and put together and all that stuff than I even expected. So that's Okay, this is future me. I'm gonna have to add this into the video to show you what was in this bag, which I said I would do and then I didn't do. It comes with an orifice reducer. So uh, people sometimes ask like, what do you really want this for? Um, if you're gonna spin a much finer, thinner yarn, a lot of times what happens is the yarn goes like this just a little bit inside the orifice because it's coming out of just one side of the inside of the flyer. I hope that makes sense, does it? Yeah. So as the flyer spins, where it's going up through the flyer moves around and it makes the yarn spin just a little bit. So if you use an orifice reducer, it will stop that movement and make it easier to spin a really, really fine yarn. I never use one because I don't really mind that movement, but it is handy to have, especially if you're a beginner. You got an extra drive band you did I did we did get an orifice hook this is really all of our wheels because you know that we're all going to benefit from this wheel right so you got an orifice hook did I get two of those okay um you got some extra of these little o-rings that are on I did see where it was they're the, they're the hooks Oh yeah, sorry, these come on the little hooks that are on the flyer, so it's stuck to the card. But that's probably the best way to show you. You get two extra bearings, see them in the bag, that's this right here. You get a little hex key, there must be something that you can tighten or take apart that needs a little hex key. I did not see where it was, but I'm sure it's in the instruction book. I'm doing the quick start guide, so... Um, but they included whatever you need. You do not need any tools to do this, which is pretty cool. And then also you got one extra brake spring. There is one already on your wheel. It is nice to have one because you really never know what might happen. That's everything that was in the little accessories bag. Oh no, see, I missed something. There is a whole little <laughs> tangled, a whole little um, extra brake line and this has got to be enough for more than one use i don't know how many but it's more than one and then you did get an extra orifice hook so there's two orifice hooks in here and last one of the things that i think is super cool is you get a couple extra little guides i do not have these do i i don't think i do this is like a different type of control card this card i cannot get it in focus hello there this card measures the degree of your twist if you want to i don't usually use that because intuitively at this point in my spinning journey i pretty much know what i want things to do but it is very helpful if you're trying to copy a commercial yarn or a yarn you've done before and then also um you get a wraps per inch ruler on this side and Oh, they sent you two. They sent one that you can give to a friend that has like a little, their website on the back. So that is pretty cool. Let's just be real. Uh, some of you guys are wondering like if they sent me this or if they paid me or if they're working with me or whatever. They're not. As far as I know, they don't even know I exist. I bought this with my own money. I did not get a discount. I don't have a code for you either. Um, but 
you need to know that because it's going to be an honest review and I was a little skeptical and I'm very, very happy. So I hope you guys love it. I will see you soon and I love you. Bye.